You are valuable. You are perceptive, you are passionate, you are unbelievably encouraging to others. Why is it that we can't sit down and tell ourselves these things? Why is it that 90% of people will never live their life to the fullest potential? Well, let me tell you, it's because we as human beings can't learn to love ourselves. With the rise of social media, it's become infinitely harder every single day not to compare ourselves to others. And we see this all the time with our beloved finance gurus, makeup and fashion enthusiasts, bodybuilders, etc. I'm here to share the same message that many have tried to share, but maybe you'll take it from an average guy like myself. As we said, social media has corrupted the lives of many young and aspiring individuals, ultimately ruining their self-esteem, their motivation, and their drive to do so by showcasing unrealistic standards. This has become especially prominent in the last decade, of course, and no one will deny that the existence of social media in our lives has made it ever more easy to connect, establish a presence and a brand. But what I'm trying to get to is that for the longest time, we have diminished and entirely undervalued our potential in the world because of our supposed competition. The point is that our minds are always so focused on others and not focused enough on pushing to achieve our own greatest dreams. Now, obviously, I'm not going to sit here and talk smack about social media for the next couple of minutes. Instead, I'm here to talk to you. And here's the issue at hand. Over this last decade and even sometime before that, the attention economy has drifted from long term and meaningful achievements to short lived moments on a viral frame. This has shifted our focus to start and divert towards chasing likes and shares, which sometimes can come back to bite us. Unfortunately, this chase for likes can sometimes overshadow that value and potentially hinder the quality and the depth for our success. It's important for us as people to minimize the amount of time we spend on social media so that we can prevent potential pitfalls and in, in mood and drive. This is why I want to talk specifically about striking a balance in the digital age. Here are five steps to take so that you can avoid drawbacks on social media. Starting with number one, define your own metrics. And let me explain this one a little bit. Instead of relying on external metrics such as likes and shares, you'll need to establish your own measures of success, right? Like I've said before, you'll need to celebrate achievements and any kind of personal growth and positive impact on others. You'll need to recognize that there are so many ways to achieve success and that there are so many interpretations of it. It's not always bound to money and to fame. Number two, create your own fan base. If you're someone who spends a lot of time on social media, try creating your own content. Try inspiring and motivating people or even making people laugh if you have to. The point is to create your own fan base and be a producer and not a consumer. I say that if you're going to spend hours doing something right, let it either be productive or progressive in some way. And that's my motto. I live by that day to day. Number three, set screen time boundaries. There's not much to say about this one, except the fact that you'll need to reduce the amount of time that you spend on social media. And I know it's easier said than done, of course, I completely understand, but realize that you are meant to do great things, not watch others do them. Like we spoke about in the last step, if, if it's not productive or progressive and you're in your work hours, like your day-to-day -day work hours, you shouldn't be doing it, right? And that's just plain and simple. Number four, mindful engagement. So you'll need to be aware of social media and the dangers of using it for long periods of time. Most of us are, right? But we don't want to leave it behind. Be aware of your thoughts and your responses while engaging with this kind of content. If you find yourself comparing yourself or feeling pressured, take a long step back and refocus your thoughts on your own progression. Number five, learn to detox. Finally, but most importantly, detoxing. Learning to detox can be extremely beneficial, especially for someone who just can't stay away, right? 
trust me, this is something I practiced for over a year uh, b before a lot of my current friends now knew me. And wow, it was like I had struck gold, right? So <clears throat> back then I had found a sense of peace knowing that I didn't have anyone to feel inferior to and that I could just move forward and at a steady pace. This made my progression tenfold. At the end of that year, I think I had accomplished so much more than I think I would have in two years. And I'm, I'm saying this extremely honestly because over the last few years, um, I had spent a lot of time self-reflecting and a lot more time on social media. By the way, a lot of time that I don't think I'll ever get back. And I think that once I joined the military, I learned this sense of discipline and this sense of uh, structure that really helped me realize that people on the internet aren't there to share good experiences with you. They're there for likes and for comments and for followers and all in all, they're there for the money. All of these steps are guaranteed to bring you one step or even a few steps ahead of your peers because you will be able to diligently follow social norms just in a smarter and more conscientious way. So I'll end this off by saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. And this is a term that dates back to the 12th century in John Haywood's proverb collection of 1546. And it means that you can offer someone a piece of advice, but you can't make them take it. Thank you guys so much for watching this week's upload. And guys, let me know if you'd like this kind of content and if you want to see more of it. As always, stay positive, stay motivated. Peace.